Hi, welcome to the workshop for the first of my Great Guitar Build-Off 2021 videos. Um, some of you might recognize the backdrop from the Great Guitar Build-Off 2020 where I built this SG Junior, um, actually from an old door frame. Um, so if you've seen that series, welcome back. If not, I'll position a link up there so you can have a look at those videos if you want to. Now for that build, I already had a very good idea of what I was going to do before I had even heard of the competition um, and had the plans, the materials, etc. in place. This year it's slightly different in so much as we've been in lockdown for a few months. I haven't really been able to get out and look at materials or buy materials. So I'm kind of limited to what I've got on hand in the shop at the moment. I went through this in a little bit more detail a couple of weeks ago in another video, but I'm going to get you down on the bench now and we'll have a look at the materials that I've got and try and kind of start to formulate a plan as to what I'm going to do with them. So in terms of the material that I've got on hand, um, it's mostly kind of reclaimed stuff that I've got lying around the shop. I've got these two pieces of what appears to be mahogany of some sort. Um, they're about they're about 30 mil thick. I'm kind of thinking I'm probably only going to need one of those. I've got a big chunk of maple. Again, this is probably 30 to 35 mil thick. got a, a piece of maple here that's about 20 mil thick um, but it is quite nicely figured and I have a huge length of maple um, this is about 35 mil thick it's about four inches wide um, it's probably the best part of two and a half meters long now I'm a firm believer that if you're paying attention, the materials you have will help you with your design considerations. And I feel that this is particularly relevant in this case. Um, and in particular, this great big long piece of maple is shouting neck through guitar build at me. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to do. So as it stands, and this is open to change, and it might very well change as we go through the build, I'm going to build a neck through guitar it's going to have a pitch back headstock probably about 17 degrees um, break angle from neck to body of around about three degrees i'm going to use one of these big chunks of mahogany as the back section of the body and one of these sections of maple as the cap of the guitar cap's going to be about 20 mil thick three quarters of an inch ish um, and it's going to be a carved top. However, while that's what I've got in my head as the design, I haven't put pen to paper yet, so there is a fair chance that that might not be possible with the material I've got on hand. So what I need to do now is clear the bench down, get some paper out, and start kind of planning this out a little bit more detail. Okay, so I've drawn this out full size on a big sheet of paper just so I can kind of get an idea in my head of what it is I need to do to move forward. Um, you're probably not going to be able to see this very well, but I'll bring you in closer and show you the relevant bits in a second. But basically what this is telling me is that I need one piece of maple that's about 1100 millimeters long that will go from the end of the body right the way through to the end of the headstock. It's not going to be thick enough at the headstock end, so I've got to glue an additional piece on there to give me the thickness I need and it's not going to be anywhere near thick enough at the body end. So I'm going to have to laminate two or three pieces together to get the thickness. That just depends on how thick it is once I've cleaned the big billet of maple up. Okay, so I'm not really sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but this section here is the, the main body of the guitar. And I've put that at 50 mil thick, but obviously because it comes off the neck at an angle, we need to make that slightly thicker to account for the material that we need to cut away to put that angle onto it. So I'm getting that at just under 70 mil thickness. So that means I'm gonna to have to laminate three bits 
of the timber together to get the thickness that I want from there. I've also very quickly kind of sketched out the body shape that I have in mind. Again, you won't be able to see it on this uh, particularly well. Um, and I'm going to amend this because there are a few sort of changes I want to do to it, but it does give me kind of a rough idea of how much material I'm going to need. So I'm going to need two additional pieces of the maple, about 400 mil long, to laminate to form the center section of the body. And I'm going to need a piece about 170 mil long to laminate onto the top to give the thickness that I need for the headstock. So the next step is I'm going to put together a very quick cutting list and we can break this big lump of maple down into its component parts and then look at getting it thicknessed up. Okay, so I've just been and measured this and you can see I've put some magic marker onto here where it kind of roughly needs cutting up. Um, I've just about got enough. I've got probably three inches left at the end so this fits really well but there's no issues with any of the timber so i don't have to worry about having extra etc um, to cut off now all i'm going to do to start with is i'm just going to square lines across kind of roughly on those marks double check it Yep. And then I'm simply going to get my bench hook in. And then I'm simply going to break this down with a handsaw into more usable chunks. Okay, so that's the timber broken down. Um, next, I'm gonna break out my thicknesser and start to get this cleaned up. Now this is gonna be the third build on the trot where I'm gonna say I should really get some new blades for this thicknesser because they're very dull and it's probably gonna take ages to get this sorted. Okay, so I've run all that through the planer now. Um, I need to buy some new blades for that. They're really dull, all that took ages. But now all I've got to do is to kind of clean the edges up a little bit. So I'm just gonna do those with a hand plane. What I'll do is I'll, I'll skim some off till I get to kind of nice clean material. This is really rough at the moment. And then I'll just check them for square to make sure that they're not at a dodgy angle. And the first thing I need to do there is just have a look at the board and try and see if I can see which way the grain is running. Now it looks to me that the grain is running up this way. So I'm going to try planing in that direction first. Oh, 
Okay, so that's quite a workout. I've just planed that until I've got all the rough material off um, and then checked it with the square. And there was one or two places where I'd tipped a little bit one way or the other. So I just literally concentrate on the high side. Um, I don't know how well you'd be able to see this, but if it was high on this side, the side facing you, I would put this edge of the plane level with the edge away from the high side. And what that will do, it will naturally force the weight of the plane to kind of bias to this side of the material and take it down square. So I've done that. So it's, it's kind of pretty flat and it's square all the way along its length. And I actually, I guessed right with the grain direction which it's a 50-50 anyway, um, but looking at the way the figure was running, I knew pretty much that it was gonna be this direction I needed to be planing in. So now that I've established that, it's very easy to then get the other side right most of the time. It's a natural material, you can never tell 100%, but I'm pretty sure that if I now flip this end over end and put it back in the vise, If I now plane in this direction, we'll be right again. And we are, which is great. Okay, so there's all my components kind of cut down, planed up um, and to size. And the way that this is going to work is at the body end, it's gonna be three layers thick. And then at the headstock end, it's gonna be two layers thick. And that will give me the thickness I need to cut out the angled shape of both the headstock and the body. Now I could theoretically glue this all together now. Um, however, I wouldn't be absolutely convinced that I got everything in the right place. And I feel a little bit uncomfortable with not having a plan to refer to. So what I'm going to do now before I glue it all together is to break out another sheet of paper and I'm going to do the top view plan of the guitar. So basically I'll start with a line for my nut and kind of then work everything back from that. Okay, so there is the basic design of the guitar roughed out. What I did was drew in a center line and then I drew my knot line. From there, I was able to determine the scale length to the bridge and also kind of where my fretboard needed to finish. Now I'm looking to put a 24 fret neck on this. Um, 
So that means the neck pickup's gonna be quite tight against the neck, just to give me a bit of room on the body. Um, I then position the rough sketch that I'd done of the body shape underneath this, so it lined up with where the 17th fret was. Lined up the center lines and then kind of traced the outline. I'm kind of pretty cool with the outline of the guitar. Um, I might just do a little bit of work on the horns. Don't quite like them, but I'll clean those up. Um, it's kind of looking very stratish at the moment, but I'm sure once we get a carved top onto it, it'll look very, very nice. Um, not quite sure yet where the switch is going to go. It's fairly crowded down here. Um, so I might put it in the horn. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough room, but I can sort that out at some stage. Um, I'm not going to use those knobs, they're just there for reference purposes. And I haven't decided whether I'm going to have cream or black pickup rings yet. And that's pretty much it. Um, from here, I can determine a few things. I can figure out on my blanks for the neck um, where everything needs to be positioned to be glued up. So we can get that underway. Um, and I can also use the body section of this drawing to create a template for the body. Um, and I think once I've made that template, I can then kind of tidy these horns up a little bit to the shape that I want them. I don't think I need to add anything to them. I think it's a case of taking away and smoothing and blending the curves in. So what I'm gonna do now is take all of this off and then just check against the timber that I've cut that I can glue it all into position where I need it. Okay, so I've just been through this um, and measured it up against the drawing that I've just done and it all seems to be lining up really, really nicely. I've actually got more length on this than I thought I was going to need, but I'd much, much rather have more than too little. So that's all fine. Um, okay, so I've marked this main piece of wood up now. Um, there's a line up this end where the extra piece of timber that will form the headstock will go is, and there's two lines there for the two additional bits that are going to form the central spine of the body. But before I glue anything up, I'm just gonna take this wheel gauge and mark the center lines on both the top and the bottom. And when you're doing this, always mark from the same edge. So with that done, I'm gonna clear everything off the bench and we'll get some glue and clamps out and get this put together. Okay, so I've just glued this up off camera. Um, pretty much used every clamp I've got doing it, but we're all good. It's all glued together and it all seems to be kind of where it needs to be. So I'm gonna leave this overnight to dry up and we'll come back tomorrow and see how we've done. Okay, so this has been gluing up overnight and everything should be good and dry now. So I'm just gonna get it out of its clamps and we can see what we've got. Okay, so that all seems to have gone together really nicely. Um, slight little bit of unevenness on the sides. That's not a huge problem. I'll probably clean that up in about 30 seconds flat with a plane. Um, and we seem to have a nice glue joint all the way down there. Um, so yeah, brilliant. I'll get all these clamps put away and we'll break out a plane. Okay, so there it is, all cleaned up. Um, what I didn't do was take the time to note on each of these pieces of timber which way the grain was running. So inevitably, I've got them kind of mixed up. So I wasn't able to like really plane just in one direction because it was starting to tear out a little bit. Um, so I've had to kind of plane it at an angle and go in with a card scraper just to finish off the last little bits. But we've got it kind of something very much like what we want it to be. Um, this is quite weighty. Um, there's obviously way more material than we need on this blank. So um, 
So as we start to shape the headstock end and get the body to the right angle, we're actually going to be losing quite a lot of this. So it will come down in weight quite a bit, but with the mahogany wings and the maple top, I can see this being a chunky beast to say the least. So in terms of the next steps, um, I think it's to mark the angle of the headstock and remove the waste material there and to mark out the brake angle from the end of the fretboard down to the end of the body. Remove the material from the top and then we can measure down at a right angle from there to the desired thickness of the body and remove the rest of the material there. There's quite a lot of meat left around the heel area of the guitar that we're probably not going to want there but that's something we can address once we start to work out exactly where the body's going to go and what the back of the guitar is going to look like. So for the time being that's very very chunky but it's not going to stay like that for long. However that's all going to be something for the next episode. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you won't miss out on future instalments and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.